and the best of luck. Now, it's not just our first guest's acting ability that's made him a firm favourite with audiences in his career, which spans over 35 years. His charm and charisma means he's still getting the ladies' man roles, from wooing Audrey Roberts as a con man in Coronation Street to his latest role as a lawyer in the comedy show Lunch Monkeys, where his female PA has fallen under his spell. Please welcome Nigel Haber. <laughs> I thought you were talking about us, a bunch of lunch monkeys. <laughs> what? what does that mean? I don't know what it means. I, I, I think it means people who skive off at lunchtime oh. in working in offices and stuff. Oh, so it is us. But the show is really fun to do, and I have a lot of. And those kids in the show are fantastic actors, and I think they're destined to go far. And I, I, I have fun making it. In fact, I was doing Corrie at the same time as recording. Oh, as making okay. it. So I was a bit stressed out because I used to go, I pick, go a quick scene on lunch monkeys, and I run back and do Corrie. But. Um, would it you prefer out. being being the sort of the, the smoothie, which is obviously what you're you're known as, whether you like it or not, or the comedy? Or I do don't both? mind. I just don't mind, as long as I'm working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how do you like playing a lawyer, though? Because that that was basically your destiny, wasn't yes, it? Yes, I played the odd lawyer actually, um, but it was. You know, I'm acting it. I, you know, I don't know anything about the law. <laughs> which you have made a good one though, because your I whole family. I know. Are lawyers, I'm the only they? one who isn't really. Um, and I'd be terrible at it, I, and I know. I tell you why, because I get very emotionally involved, and, and I know I, you know, if I was defending someone, I'd, 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 I'd go mad if he didn't get off, and I'd sort of kill the judge. Or <laughs> why that? You've got to be very calm. And my brother, who's a fantastic lawyer, on the one hand he says, and on the, on the other, he's incredibly cool and yeah. calm. I couldn't. I'd be. Da, 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 da. So I'm no good at so that. So how do they feel about the fact that, that you're an actor? Your family. I, they didn't really notice. I just sort of did a runner and disappeared off radar. Yeah. <laughs> they never noticed. No, no. Have they it, noticed yet? Yeah, they're beginning to notice now. Yeah. And, and is it true you're, you're going to be making a film about your father's I, life? I am. You're uh, right. I'm, I'm, we're working on this film about just one specific summer of 1967 when, when um, there was a news flash on, on the TV and it was when the Rolling Stones, Mick and Keith, had been arrested for, for, for finding drugs and things. Mm -hmm. And my father watching said, but I hope to God they don't ask me to defend them. You know, all that went. And uh, an hour later, the phone goes, and Dad disappears and comes back, and he says, "I am defending the Rolling Stones." <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly what happened. And that that year, and we were sworn. My brother and I were sworn to secrecy. We couldn't tell anyone that he was doing this. So, and they were the most famous guys in the world. I mean, if you think yeah. someone's famous now, those guys were amazingly yeah. famous. And we had, we couldn't tell our mates or anything. I was bursting to tell my friends. But I got to know them, meet them, and they came and had dinner, and, we, and they became uh -huh. part of our family that summer. So the film is about that little period. And, and did the, working with them change your dad at all? Because he was a bit of a stuffed shirt before he, then, wasn't totally he? totally changed. See, he met them and he fell in love with them, thought they were such a smart guys, and uh, he never wore a stiff collar again, he never wore a bowler hat. He, Changed him completely. <laughs> yeah. He became each other. Hi, boys. He became more cool. <laughs> it's a bit disconcerting, really. But you know, we love the Stones because you remember the Beatles were out at the same time. Sure. Do you remember? And um, my my parents liked the Beatles, so we thought I, we can't like them. I mean, you can't like a band that your parents swoon over. Can you? <laughs> so we chose the, the Stones. They didn't like the Stones at all because you know, they were a bit rough around the edges. That's not the only famous case, though, is it, that your family have been no, involved no. in? No, no. Dad did um, the, the Yorkshire Ripper. He went mm. and, uh, did he? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, did he, he fall in love with him? And no. Stuff <laughs> no. <laughs> he didn't. Actually, it was really... He just it was... for him and a bit like him and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dad, the case, I mean, I think uh, there was no question he was going to go down. It was whether he was going to he plead insanity and therefore go to a prison that I mean, would treat him mm. less harshly. Mm. And uh, yeah. he, but Dad rang and said, do you want to come to court because I'm going to... You know, prosecute him today. I'm going to have him in the box today. And I said, um, I'd love to. So I went, and it was just an amazing morning to see that guy. He was sitting just sort of there. Mm. And my father got up to, to ask a question, and he didn't speak for a minute. And uh, the judge was thinking, what is he, What's happening? And then dad said, I'm sorry, how do, how do you spell your name? And, I said, and, and it just, he said, um, Did you enjoy killing all those women? <gasps> you know, you could cut the atmosphere with a knife. It was just fantastic. Have you ever done any writing, Nigel? Because it's such an in interesting story in itself. You know, your, your dad's life, your grandfather's life. Have you ever written any of it down? Well, I wrote my, my sort of my book, mm -hmm. which was 
But then in novel form? Well, I know, but I am sort of planning to write a novel now, and I'm planning to write a, a historical novel, which I know people say is the most difficult one thing mm -hmm. you can write, but I've got this sort of idea, and so I've got to do it now. My, my literary agent man says, right, come on. How lovely to yeah. have one. How yeah. about you? So I'm going to... Sounds quite grand, that, doesn't it? Does. It does. My literary agent. <laughs> Go now. For do one you... second, I sounded intelligent. Uh, no, do... <laughs> it didn't last very long. <laughs> now, obviously, aside from all of your um, wonderful uh, sort of um, acting CV, um, you did foray into the jungle, mm -hmm. which baffled me because, of course, you'd just come out of Corian as an ex Corrie girl and working with lovely Sue Nichols, so it certainly wasn't for profile. So it... I was thinking, oh my God, Nigel Hayes is going to the jungle. We've read that your wife wasn't very happy about it. No. So why did you make that decision? Well, I just thought it was a year of doing sort of crazy things, and I, I, I just thought, why not? It just sounded like a bit of fun. What was the but worst it clearly thing wasn't. about it? No, it's... it was actually the most boring thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the boredom that really hurt me because I am a very active person. I like to do, you know, like all you girls, I can, yeah. you know, you want to do things and be with people and. Because yeah, we just see the, the little bits. You just see, doing, yeah. if you're doing you just see the little bits. Yeah. Yeah, they the can cut it any way they want yeah, to. You can make you nice or nasty. Of just yeah. sitting. And I just got so bored. And mm. it's a very small area where you have to live. And I got. And I was going to kill them, big Ope. Had I not got out of there. <laughs> so. I didn't want to go to prison, really, for that, because I was going to kill him. Is it him? And I couldn't work out how he could have been a and member of Parliament for 12 years. How could he be a member of brain. Parliament for 12 years? He has no brain! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's another... That's another <laughs> Last night, I was, I was having dinner with my wife in a restaurant in London, and a man came up to me, quite sort of shut. I thought, my God, that's Lembic Oakley. <laughs> but it was Brown Paddock... Oh, well, no, um... Brown Paddock? Yes. Brown who looks Please quite sky. like him, yes, and said, I was in the, well done in the jungle. I was like, oh, that's lovely. It's going to hit me. And so, anyway. So, next time your wife says not to do anything, you listen to her. I'm going to. Havis. She very, very nearly sort of said, right, I'm off. Quite a test, really. Are you going to go and Corrie again, do you think? I hope so. Did you love it? We're talking. I absolutely Isn't it great? adore it. And, um, I've got to go and say sorry to Sue, uh, to Audrey. I was in Manchester yesterday talking about it, so, so watch this space. Oh, okay. yeah. oh it's, yeah. Nigel, it's lovely to have you on the it's show. It's very, again. very Nigel kind of you to everyone. ask me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much.